Welcome back nerds. Today we're going to be going over Artibus V0.1. This is the first beta release of Artibus. Uh, the way that the Artibus updates are going to work for the next few weeks is we're going to be porting features over from SGT, SMC and SPS, which are my old school three data packs. And then at some point in the future, we're going to release a full version 1.0, probably quite soon actually. And then we're going to start working on some much more interesting features. Uh, and I'm also considering splitting the data pack into two parts. The first of which will be Artibus, which is not resource pack dependent. And the second of which will be Orbis, which is. Now we discussed the idea of Orbis a few weeks ago, and that will be more based around world generation changes. If you're interested in knowing why, you can look up the meanings of both of these words. They're all Latin, by the way. Um, uh, but today we're going to be going over some really simple recipes that we've added from SGT, as well as some more interesting features down the road as well. So first of all, I've re-added the recipe to transform clay into four clay balls in your inventory. This is a really simple one. It just means that you can just do that without having to, you know, place the clay block in world and mine it with your fist in order to get the actual clay balls. It's just a, a really simple one. Uh, we also have the ability to craft flower pots out of nether bricks, which is an interesting one. This is a suggestion from someone, but it's a, a relatively helpful one, actually. It's much easier to get nether bricks than it is to get clay bricks, so there you go. Uh, we have brought back the proper snow math as well. So if you use three snow blocks, you will get 24 snow layers, and if you use three snowballs, you will get six snow layers, so much more efficient on the snow layer crafting. Uh, we've also brought back the eight stairs recipes, so every time that you would craft a stair, you can see you get eight. So it doesn't matter what type of stair I'm crafting, I have incorporated every single one. Uh, strangely enough, uh, with most of the things that I brought up in you know th this update, I mostly just copied the features over from SGT directly. But it turns out they added a lot of stairs in a version. I can't remember which version it was. I think it may have been... Um, I think it may have even been like 115 or 116, but they added a bunch of stair variants, and obviously we've got new ones now, like Blackstone as well. Uh, so I had to actually just go ahead and remake all of these from scratch, which was fine. It wasn't too difficult to do, to be fair. Uh, we also have the now more uh, the more consistent recipes for each of these three items as well. So Prismarine, as you can see here, is crafted with four Prismarine shards. I can tell you in advance already, this is going to be changed to only craft one Prismarine in version 0 0.2, uh, but for the time being, you'll be able to get four from that recipe if you do this, and then you can craft four Prismarine prismarine into four prismarine bricks like so and that's based on the stone brick recipe and then finally you can craft dark prismarine from prismarine bricks as well as an ink sack or black dye. I am planning at some point in the future on doing universal dyeing which would incorporate the ability to dye certain things with items that aren't actually dyes but we haven't started on that kind of thing just yet and that is a huge task so we're going to leave that one off the story for now. Uh, we, all, oh yeah, we also have a, a recipe for the sea lantern as well which is just four prismarine crystals to reflect the recipe for glowstone. Uh, I I kind of realized that this item has like a frame on it, so maybe it does require some prismarine shards in there as well, or even maybe a dark prismarine in the middle surrounded by four prismarine crystals. Uh, we'll come back to that one in the future for sure. Uh, we also now have a new recipe for red nether brick. Uh, as uh, Again, similar to the dark prismarine, you can craft it out of nether bricks as well as red dye or nether wart. Uh, we also have this changed recipe for magma. Uh, it's always kind of annoyed me that magma was crafted from magma cream because... I like I get why they did that because it's magma cream but at the same time it was a bit strange so my way of doing it and in my opinion what I think is a much better way of doing the recipe is to have netherrack be crafted into a bucket of lava and once again you have this regular blaze powder and slime ball recipe in my opinion I don't get why four blaze powder and four slime balls would equal one magma block. That that always amazed me. I, I didn't really understand why that was the case. The magma block uses the netherrack texture with the lava veins overlaying over it. So why not have it be the netherrack with a bit of lava in the middle? That's kind of what I think it should be. Uh, we also have a new recipe for the campfire. Or I say a new recipe. This is a, a very old one at this point. But you can basically dry out rotten flesh into leather. This takes about three minutes. So you would need to leave the rotten flesh on the campfire for quite some time. And make sure you run back and remember to pick up the leather once it has popped off uh, but there you go free and easy early game leather as far as i'm concerned uh, there aren't many uses for rotten flesh unfortunately apart from trading with villagers to get diamonds um or no, not diamonds <laughs> Trading with villagers to get emeralds, but now you can use your rotten flesh to get some additional leather early game. It's really helpful if you're getting that, you know, early game enchantment table and don't have many cows around you, so it's pretty helpful stuff. Uh, we also have new recipes for all of the cracked variants of bricks. You can see here, all of the cracked versions of bricks, so cracked stone bricks, cracked nether bricks, and cracked polished black stone bricks, are all now crafted in the blasting furnace. And I think this recipe is much, much better. Um, this was actually just done beforehand by smelting these bricks, and... 
that's fine. It's not a terrible recipe, but I think blasting makes a lot more sense because it means that the cracks would have been formed by the explosions that would have happened uh, within the blasting furnace or something like that. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that's how a blast furnace actually works, but you, you get the idea. Uh, we also have the old recipes for the ex nihilo uh, cobblestone crafting. So if you put cobblestone in a blasting furnace, you'll be able to get gravel. And if you put gravel in a blasting furnace, you'll be able to get sand. So you can essentially craft glass and flint from cobblestone, which in my opinion is very helpful uh, at the cost of furnace materials. So I think that's a really cool thing you can do as well. You can see there, cobblestone to gravel and gravel to sand. Uh, finally, we also have a, 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 well, the final furnace recipe anyway. We have red sand to red glass. This was a bit of a weird one that some people didn't really like in the previous versions. And I've recently spoken to some people and they said to have it be uh, orange glass to reflect the color of the sand. Now, a bit of backstory anyway. First of all, the reason why I wanted to do this red sand to red glass thing is because I think it's a bit of a joke that, you know, it's kind of funny that you have like sand that's been dyed red. So you have glass that's been dyed red. So it's like sand, glass, red sand, red glass. If it was blue sand, it would be blue glass. You know, like it doesn't matter what color the glass actually is. It's just the fact that it's called red sand. I think it's good anyway. So you can see here, look, sand to glass. Why doesn't it craft yellow glass? You know, that, that's kind of the point. So it's just red sand, red glass. It doesn't matter what color it is. It's, it's the name. It's the name, you know, just roll with it. We also now have all of these stone cutter features brought back from SGT. Uh, so once again, if you put an oak log in a stone cutter, you can craft it into six planks, 12 slabs, eight stairs, or 24 sticks. Now I realize that I've actually accidentally left out the more sticks crafting recipe. So at some point in the future, there's gonna be a new recipe introduced where you can craft two planks into eight sticks. And that's why this math uh, makes sense when you craft a log into 24 sticks. So currently if you craft planks into sticks, it will only give you four, but it's it's meant to give you eight. So that'll be brought back in a very near version, I hope. Uh, we also have brought back the recipes for the stone cutter for terracotta. So it's always annoyed me that you make that you make the glazed terracotta, or in my opinion, painted terracotta as it should be should be referred to. Um, you make it in a in a furnace <laughs> in vanilla Minecraft. Very strange. I don't really understand why they did that. Um, Although also I, I think I do understand why they did that. I think they were just lazy, if we're honest. Um, unfortunately, Mojang do have an issue with making very lazy crafting recipes. In my opinion, glazed terracotta would have been best done if there was an entirely new table brought into the game, which allowed you to add dyes to certain blocks. And there would be a whole variety of different types of glazed terracotta that you could make, a huge library of different blocks and textures. But they didn't do that. They just made it so that if you, if you melt terracotta, it becomes painted with this lovely design. It doesn't make any sense. I don't really get it, but basically all terracotta types are now crafted from the stone cutter, because in my opinion, this is the most appropriate block to make a texture more detailed and more clean, because it's as if you've kind of put the terracotta to this thing, cleaned it up a bit, polished it, sliced it down so it's more flat and then painted it. I don't really know. There isn't really much logic here, unfortunately, but whatever. Anyway, going on to some more interesting changes now. So we've done with all the recipes. We actually have a new feature entirely, which is inspired by Ark Survival Evolved. Um, early game in Minecraft, you may have found the issue that I found where crafting arrows is a bit of a nuisance. Not because of feathers, not because of sticks, but because of flint. Flint is annoying to come by. There's no good reason for it, in my opinion, and it's really kind of dumb. Um, what you can do is simply get some gravel, place it down, get some gravel, place it down, get some gravel, place it down, and you can be doing that for 10 minutes and only end up with about five or six flint, unfortunately, because it's 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 very it's a very small chance that you actually get flint from mining gravel usually. So inspired by Ark Survival Evolve, where you can use all your different types of tools on different surfaces to get different materials, if you break gravel with an axe, you will always get flint. How smart is that? So, you know, this isn't really, this isn't overpowered by any means either, because, you know, it uses up the durability of your axe and it doesn't mine quicker. All it does is it just allows you to go through that process of just like, you know, dig it, place it down, dig it, place it down, dig it, place it down, and so on until you get flint like we just did, but much, much faster by using up the durability of a tool. And I think it's really, really helpful. Uh, I've also made it so that if you have silk touch on your axe as well, which I personally do sometimes late game, then you will actually get gravel back when you mine it with an axe as well. So basically, uh, gravel will perform how you expect it to behave uh, when you do have silk touch. So instead of just placing down gravel and mining it and placing down gravel and mining it and placing down gravel and mining it, you can now just mine it with an axe early game. Doesn't matter what type of axe it is, 
wooden, stone, iron, gold, diamond, netherite, it will always drop flint when you mine it with an axe. So that was a, a really fun thing to code, actually. I, I really enjoyed making that. Loot tables are quite fun, and I'm really getting back into the swing of data packing, and I'm, I'm quite enjoying myself. So finally, we have another change, um, which is brought back from SGT. This is whenever you, you know, mine coal ore, you'd have a chance to get gunpowder, uh, and this does scale off of fortune as well. So if you have a pickaxe without fortune, there is a 1 in 20 chance of getting gunpowder, and for every level of fortune, it increases by 5%. So with a, fish, with a fortune 3 netherite pickaxe here, uh, you'll be able to get gunpowder 1 in every 5 coal ore. Now that sounds like quite a lot, but if you think about it, I think that's a really, really helpful feature late game, because you don't really have any reason to mine coal late game. Like, why would you when you can get fuel from so many other sources? So if you come ahead to a vein of coal right here, I just mined 16 coal ore for reference, we would get just over a stack of coal and 5 gunpowder. So I think that's really balanced. I, th I think there's, I don't see any issue with that at all, really. I think that's fine. Um, if that's a bit overpowered, I can reduce the numbers. So I'd be very interested to hear you guys' feedback. But I think this is fine based on, you know, that, that was basically like a full coal vein and Fortune 3. Usually you would get a lot less gunpowder than this. And uh, the, the, basically the numbers have been worked out as such. So that early game, when you mine a full vein of coal ore, you are very likely to get one gunpowder. That is the exchange rate. You'll only get the larger numbers of gunpowder late game when you have Fortune 3. So moving on from that, we have a few changes to mob loot tables. So as you can see here, I've got all the animals that drop leather, including the little rabbit down there. He drops his little uh, leather, rabbit leather, what's it called? Rabbit hide? Is it rabbit hide? Rabbit hide, yeah. <laughs> That's the one. I'm still hoping that they add the ability to make a rabbit hide hat to the game. I feel like that would be really interesting. Like purely cosmetic it would just be a, a different leather cap i guess but i don't know um but yeah as you can see here we have these mobs in a cage which means that something's happened to them all of these entities now always drop one leather now this is a strange choice because in a previous version of sgt i actually removed the leather from the donkey horse and mule loot table to encourage people to just simply not kill them but now i've sort of started to realize recently like why and how the leather should work the way it does so i'm, I'm going into so much <laughs> so much detail with leather but basically whenever you kill a cow right cows have a chance early game to drop zero to two leather now the leather texture if you don't remember looks like a cow's body you know like th this is this is the the top down view of a cow's skin so you can see where i'm going with this already can't you so essentially i don't really get why cows have a chance to either not have skin have their skin once or have their skin and an additional skin it doesn't really make any sense and of course if you have fortune you can get five skins from a single cow like where are those extra skins coming from is it wearing a, a cow skin suit that would be terrifying the, the cow screams for he doesn't realize if he's cow or cow in cow. He's confusion. So basically, all these animals now always drop one leather regardless. It's just a simple loot table. Once it runs, they all drop one leather when they die. So llama will drop one leather, mule, donkey, cow, trader llama, horse. They all drop one leather. And the rabbit will always drop one rabbit hide. And that just makes more sense to me. So there you go. If you need leather early game and you know you don't want to slaughter all your cows, now you can know the exact number of cows that you need to murder in order to get your books, basically. So that's that's pretty snazzy. Uh, shulker boxes are now a little bit different as well. Uh, so previously in SGT, I did the fact that shulker boxes would always drop two shulker shells. Uh, that is a feature taken from Vanilla Tweaks, and it's just kind of like a logical feature in general anyway. Uh, shulkers in Vanilla Minecraft have a chance to drop zero to one shulker shells. In my pack, they have a chance to drop one to two shulker shells. So for every shulker that you kill, you will always get at least one shulker shell, but you might also occasionally get two. So it's a little bit of a balance in between vanilla and the uh, you know the previous version of SGT where you always got two. Uh, we also have brought back a feature from the original SGT, which I quite like. It's the armed armor stands feature. And of course, it works the same as before. If you are crouching and you place an armor stand down, it will not have arms just like that. Um, it's really weird, right? I haven't done data packs for such a long time. I have almost no idea how this works. I think if, if, if I spent the time to look into the code properly and, and learn everything through, I could probably learn how to do this again in like an hour. But um, I, I basically just stole this code from SGT. And it's really weird because I feel like I was like plagiarizing myself. I'm like, what? It, it's my own work. Like it, it, I'm stealing from myself. <laughs> but it's like a past me that was more knowledgeable. And I, I feel like I'm disrespecting that that knowledge that I built up. Never mind. Anyway, speaking of things that I stole from myself, we also have the old features for the golden food back. So uh, I'm going to give myself a stack of each of these so we can just demonstrate. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and go to game mode survival. So I'm actually going to give myself effect give, scalibur, hunger, 
10 seconds, 255. True. Make me hungry, hungry, please. Can I be hangy? Please. There we go. Fantastic. So, um, yes. I'm going to just eat a carrot. Okay, so basically all these foods now give you different bonus effects. For all of you that remember SGT version 2.2, uh, some of you will really like these features, and, and I personally really liked them as well. I actually think that the effects that are given to the player from the Golden Apple and the Enchanted Golden Apple, or in my case, the Gookie, uh, they basically are outdated and not strong enough for modern-day Minecraft. I think that as rare as these items are and as expensive as these items are, they should give you a lot more benefits. And I'm hoping that people do use Golden Apples more now, uh, given that they have much cooler features. So first of all, golden carrots are the weakest. Um, they basically aren't that different from vanilla. They give you three hunger haunches, as you saw there, which is a little bit more than, um, you know, a bread, for example. I don't know why I needed to give it a comparison, but it also will clear all negative effects. So if you have slowness, weakness, nausea, wither, and you eat a golden carrot, it will clear that effect up, same as how a milk bucket works. So for example, if I give myself uh, effect give scalibur <laughs> slowness slowness and uh, weakness and wither and poison no po poison you know i've got all these negative effects that are going to kill me so i'm going to eat a carrot and they will all be cleared up just like that so it basically work the same as eat as drinking from a milk bucket which is why i think that it's not too overpowered because really you could just be carrying a milk bucket around and golden carrots are a sort of late game food now anyway so if you ever were in the position where you want to choose either steak or pork or cooked pork chops or a golden carrot, I would actually now recommend going with a golden carrot just because of this occasional beneficial use. It's not going to benefit you that much, and again, golden carrots are expensive unless you have a gold farm, so I think that this is actually relatively balanced. Uh, we also have new features for the golden apple. This functions the same as in SGT version 2.5, uh, version 2.2, and well, I guess version 2.5 as well. Uh, golden carrots will now give you... Uh, <laughs> Golden apples will now give you absorption too for an infinite duration. And uh, but the way that this works essentially is that even though this is an infinite duration, if I was to lose the absorption to the infinite duration would be cleared. So if I do TP Scalibur my location plus seven like that, you can see we've lost two hearts. We still have absorption two. Teleport up again, and the absorption clears as soon as all of our bonus hearts go. Now the interesting thing about these golden apples is that they actually stack. So if you eat one and you eat two, now you're going to see we have absorption three, and we've gone from four to six hearts. Another one, four to eight hearts, and the final one, a full ten hearts, absorption five, and once again it will clear as soon as you've lost all those hearts. So if I teleport myself up about fifteen blocks, that's an at sign. That's not a What's the thing? So yeah, we lose six hearts, still got absorption, and the absorption clears the instant that we have no bonus hearts remaining. So basically what this means is you can actually now use golden apples to prepare for a big fight or to keep yourself stocked up on bonus hearts. This feature is of course directly inspired by Breath of the Wild where if you sleep in a comfy bed or you eat uh, you know, food that gives you bonus hearts, you will actually have those bonus hearts forever until you lose them. I much prefer that system and I think for something which is as expensive as a golden apple this is a much cooler way of doing things. So if you really do have the apples to burn and the gold to burn, you can essentially double your health bar by eating this food right here. Obviously, the first one is the most beneficial, and that's kind of the way I want things to be, so that if you eat one golden apple, you get a full health recovery, and you get the four bonus hearts, and then for any additional ones afterwards, you only get an extra two bonus hearts, up to a maximum of ten. So we'll see there, we've got absorption three, absorption four, absorption five, and if we eat another one, nothing. But if we were to take a bit of damage, for example, if I was to TP myself up and do that, eating another one would just carry on from where we are, as you can see there. So I think this is a really cool system. I think golden apples are much more helpful this way. And now I'm sure you're wondering, what do golden cookies do? So if I make myself, um, if I effect clear myself, effect clear... Scalibur, so we'll lose the absorption. Now, golden cookies, or enchanted golden apples, depending on whether or not you're using Calesti, uh, they basically give you the combination of five golden apples worth of features, so you basically get the full ten hearts right off the bat. For some, I mean, for something that's expensive as this, you really should get that. You also clear all current negative effects, same as the golden apple and the golden carrot, but you also get a few potion effects. So we'll eat this head. There we go, so we've got the full ten hearts immediately, and now we're going to have resistance and fire resistance for a full five minutes. Now these things are subject to change because obviously the golden cookie is a lot more rare than the golden apple and I, I know, you know, I could have added a crafting recipe back for this thing but I chose not to uh, because simply because that would open up a, a new can of worms. Because <laughs> obviously in Calesti, I've now changed it so that the golden, the enchanted golden apple is a golden cookie. So would the recipe be a golden apple with eight gold blocks or a cookie with 
eight gold blocks. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what I would do now. So I think we're going to just leave it so that the golden cookie or the enchanted golden apple doesn't have a crafting recipe for the time being. And, I, and I'm fine with that. But I do want the golden cookie to be OP. So if you have any ideas for other things that I could add in terms of potion effects, maybe like a higher level resistance or... Um, yeah, I don't know. I can't think, I can't think of anything else. Uh, then please do let me know in the comments below because I'm always interested to hear the feedback. But once again, if you eat this golden cookie, you will get these two resistances for a good five minutes, but you will keep the absorption forever until you lose all of your additional hearts. And that's about it. That's all we have time for today. So thank you very much for watching Artibus V0.1. Again, this is the very first update of Artibus. We're starting off with data packs again. I haven't realized how much I've missed data packing. Clearly, it's actually really fun and it's, it's quite... It's quite quite entertaining and quite satisfying figuring out solutions to some of these weird issues. For example, it did take me about an hour to get the coal and gravel, you know, loot tables working correctly, and they're a lot cleaner than they were in SGT, so I'm very happy with how those work now. Uh, and these new features are simply ported from SGT. They're not the most efficient coding, but they are fine for now. If we start to add a lot more features in the future, we will have to start thinking about optimization, but for the time being, it's not a problem with only a very small handful of features. So again, if you do have any recommendations for other things that I can do or features that can be changed from today's episode, please do let me know. I'm going to start working on V0.2 almost immediately. And of course, once we've imported all the features from SGT, SMC, and SBS, uh, we are going to start working on some world generation features, which is going to be fun, fun, fun. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next showcase of Artibus. Good on the pack from Curseforge, as always, and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.